Hello class, I wanted to take a couple of minutes to walk you through our weekly assignments so you would kind of have a better idea of my expectations for the week and uh, how to proceed. So you'll notice that you're here at the announcements page, which should be the page that uh, starts you off when you first log into our course. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over here to the weekly assignments and I'm going to click through to that and you'll notice that week one is available to you. Every week what I will do is I will there will be a new folder that will appear here. I will try to put them at the top of the page so that next week, week one is down here and week two is up here. Um, sometimes for whatever reason my brain just doesn't quite uh, do that because it doesn't do, uh, the system doesn't do that by default. Uh, but uh, either way you'll just go to whatever week it is and you will open that assignment uh, folder and that's where you will find uh, all of your work and the links to get to the work that you need to do. So you notice that when you first come in, this one, it has the syllabus quiz, which I had said in my welcome announcement is a required activity. Uh, you must complete that in order for you to move on with the course. If it's not done by the end of the week, um, I won't be accepting any work from you for week two. So make sure that you complete this by the end of this week. But I put it at the top of the uh, list and I want you to move through the list um, in order, really. Um, so that way things are progressing in a more natural order, the same kind of uh, way that I would present things in a classroom. Okay, so there's the syllabus quiz. Uh, you will take that, and then after you've done that, then you'll move into your first assignment, which is a reading assignment. So you have different uh, readings from our textbook this week. You will uh, note, uh, I have the page numbers here, the titles of the readings and all of that. If you don't have your textbook, make sure that you get it uh, right away so that you can get started on your reading so that then you can participate in the next assignment which is our discussion board. Now, the way the discussion boards will work for uh, reading assignments in particular is I will have uh, four of you uh, creating uh, an initial post uh, responding to a question in the textbook about the reading. So you'll note that in the um, directions here, uh, what you will do is after you read the selection. You will go through and you will look at the different questions about the writer's craft. Um, I have the page numbers in here and all that as well for the two uh, stories. And you look at the, there's usually four questions, and you'll choose one and I want you to answer that question fully in about five to eight sentences. So what I want you to do is answer that question in a way that will also uh, elicit dialogue. So uh, it will have other people saying, yes, I, I've seen the same thing, or yes, I've had the same kind of experience. Experience. And let me tell you about my other experience as well. So that way we're connecting with one another. Um, for I used to assign students to uh, lead the discussions, but um, that didn't always work. And then I have students who sometimes are maybe tend to work a little bit later in the week. So instead, what I've uh, decided to do is I've left it open. So the first four students um, are able to uh, snag a, a free grammar activity pass uh, by uh, creating that initial post and then the rest of you will respond to two of those posts, one from each story. So for example, you, um, you will all, everyone in the class including the initial posters, will respond to one uh, one posting about the 4th of July and one posting about the sanctuary of the school. I want this to be a building activity. Think of it as a discussion that we would have in a classroom where you, you know, you ask questions and you answer questions and you go back and you look again. Um, don't just post and respond only to the initial posting. Um, make sure that you interact. And just so you know, for credit, if, um, let's say, um, for the 4th of July story, uh, Mark responds to the 4th of July story and then um, Barbara responds to Mark's post uh, for uh, his initial post on the 4th of July story and then Sam replies to Barbara's post about it. Sam's posting to Barbara counts as well. Think of it as a tiered activity. So it doesn't necessarily have to line up one after another down the line. Um, as long as you're interacting and engaging in full thoughtful dialogue, answering the questions, um, giving personal experiences, relating it to other things, that's really what I'm looking for. Okay, so if you're doing the initial posting, that's due by Friday, uh, the end of the day, Fridays, always, and then all the rest of you responding to the other two, those are due by the end of the day, Monday. Okay, so that's that. Um, uploading assignments, this is the next, next activity. Um, this is very simple, the directions are here, but you will create uh, a new document in Word or Google Docs, 
write this phrase in there, save it to your computer, and then you will upload it um, after you browse your computer and then you will uh, submit that to me. Uh, the reason I have you do that as an assignment at the beginning is because this is how you will submit all of your essays to me as the course goes on. And believe it or not, I've had students get all the way to the very end of the semester, still don't know how to do it. So I'm trying to get that <laughs> little tidbit out of the way right away. Um, there's a video here that you can watch that will uh, walk you through the steps if you really don't understand that. Um, but it's pretty straightforward and um, it's a really necessary skill. You'll have to use it not just in this class but in others as well. All right, so um, yes, I know I didn't do that. Uh, here's my lecture. This is exactly what you would see if I were in the classroom. I would talk about the narrative essay and then learning styles. Um, and then there's a learning styles quiz here. I'm not going to click on that because it'll take me off of the Blackboard page and uh, open it up in the web browser. Um, but it's a little learning styles quiz. This is not a graded activity. You do not necessarily have to complete that. Uh, but it uh, can be really helpful for you. Understanding your learning style can help you with so many things, um, not just studying, although that is obviously a key uh, thing, but it can help you really with understanding how to process information as a whole. Um, so you, you'll want to make sure that you take the time to watch that in my uh my lecture and then take the little quiz so that you understand which one you are. Uh, moving on from there, my next one. Why are you not clicking? Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, no. Oh, 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 it won't let me. That's because it won't let me do it until I progress through. There you go. There's the quiz. I forgot about that. You have to complete each assignment before you're allowed to move on to the next. Um, so smiley face tricks. This is another lecture. It, there's no sound or anything to this. This is just for you to go through. I talk about descriptive uh, writing in here. So make sure you, you review that because you will need to include smiley face tricks into your writing. And then the narrative essay. This is what we're going to start working on. Um, here I have uh, the uh, different assignments and um, the expectations of that. You are going to be writing a true story about you, so you do not need to Google anything. I've had students do that as well. Don't Google topics. It's your story. You, there's no reason to Google anything. I want you to think about what it is, what story you want to tell. So I have four different prompts here. I want you to tell me about one of these, but brainstorm about more than one because who knows what you're going to come up with. And use some of the brainstorming ideas that were discussed in chapter two. Uh, and those can go along with your learning styles. If you find out that you are an auditory learner, you might want to dialogue with somebody. If you find out that you're a hands-on learner, you might want to try webbing. If you find out that you're a visual uh, learner, you might want to uh, go through photos or something like that. So there's lots of different tools you can use to brainstorm. So I want you to try uh, a few of them uh, about a couple of these different topics. And then what I want you to do is you're going to narrow it down uh, to one topic and then you will create a timeline of that topic. And um, really, it's just, and you can start at whatever point you want. That might not be the actual starting point in your final story, but that's okay. For our purposes right now, you are just going to be creating this timeline. So I want you to create that, and then you will um, we'll be using that next week because next week we're going to dive right into uh, the writing of the essay. So make sure that uh, you have this timeline complete so you're ready to go. Um, and then you'll notice down here, these will be the requirements, which I will also have posted next week. But some people just like to know, how long is this essay going to have to be? You know, What are some of the finer points? So in here, I have some of uh, those requirements. Even though we haven't started drafting yet, um, I know some people like that for a part of the, um, as a part of the uh, moving uh, ahead process because they like to plan. And then the last thing here, discussion board subscribing. This just talks about how to subscribe to uh, the discussion board. This is not required. Some people, if you are the type of person who would rather be notified that somebody has posted a response to your um, discussion that you're participating in, um, you want to have it come to you rather than you have to go in, come in and log in, then you might want to consider subscribing. Again, it's not required. Others don't like that. They don't like their email box getting cluttered up. That's fine as well. Um, but make sure that you're still on top of things, that you're logging into Blackboard um, a few times a week so that you can see if people have asked you questions, responded to your thoughts, so that you can continue the discussion. Okay, so that's it as far as this week goes. I like to keep my weekly lecture uh, for our assignments under 10 minutes and I have just now achieved that. So have a great week and I'll see you in the classroom. Bye.